Hey, God bless you. Praise the Lord. This is your friend and brother, Street Pastor Preacher Warren, or you can call me Brother Warren. Praise God. Um, Mother's Day is coming up. It's going to be on Sunday, right, Lady Adams? Yes. yes. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. And, and um, I know you lost your mother, but I know she's heaven's game. Oh, yeah. I know yeah. she's in heaven right now. Praise God, yeah. along with Bishop yeah. Dobbins. Yeah. I know they're having a Holy Ghost party right now. And those of you who lost your mothers, praise God, and they died in Jesus, they are only sleeping. Tell someone they're only sleeping, which means they're at peace. And praise God. And and those who die without Jesus will be lost. So don't die without Jesus. Amen. Or you'll be lost in hell and the lake of fire and brimstone. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Um, I'm going to read some of your prayer requests and some of your statements that you had made. I'm going to, I'm here to encourage you and not to discourage you. And even when I tell the truth, I tell the truth in love because I want to lead you the right direction. I could have been the kind of preacher that tell you what you want to hear and lead you the wrong direction. But Jesus said, broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many will go that way. Take the narrow way, which is the straight gate. God's way is the best way, according to Matthew chapter number seven. Amen. So there's a lot of preachers who will tell you what you want to hear just to get money. They don't care nothing about your soul. They want to make you jump and shout, run around the church. and You're going to get blessed. You're going to get blessed. You're going to get blessed. But they'll never tell you to repent from mess. That means they don't really love your soul. They just love your wallet. They just love your money. They don't care if you go to hell. You got people jumping and shouting every Sunday. Don't get me wrong. We know God is a blessing God. He wants to bless us. Jesus loves us. The question is, are we going to continue to love him? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Praise God. Are we perfect? No. But we are striving for perfection. And I don't ever use the statement that I'm not perfect to justify my sin. Because God gave us a conscience to know right from wrong. He gave us a conscience to know good from evil. So that's like if you cheat on your wife or if you cheat on your husband, you can't say, well, I'm not perfect. And there ain't nobody perfect. Well... There was a sense of you getting married then. I mean, marriage is about being faithful. If you, if you don't love each other, it made no sense to get married. Because marriage is about being faithful, right? It's not about cheating. So you already know that committing adultery is wrong. So if you purposely commit adultery, and then you say, oh, well, we, we're not perfect. And, well, <laughs> that, that has nothing to do with knowing to do right. People make that excuse all the time, you know. You know, uh, God not going to go for excuses. If, if he give us his word, he tells us adulterers not inherit the kingdom of God. Fornicators not inherit the kingdom of God. It shouldn't be a problem with obeying God. It shouldn't be a, uh, it should not be an attitude towards his word. It's not like people get an attitude when it comes to his standards. <laughs> Israel got an attitude with God when it came to obeying his word, his law, his standards. But when it came to blessings and blessings, well, it was all smiles then. But when God said, uh, uh, keep my holy word and keep my commandments, and there's an attitude here. And then it's those who did obey his word were out of attitude. But like people have, a lot of people have a hard time, want, you know, obeying his, well, I won't say a hard time doing it. A lot of people just don't want to do it. I'm talking about people in church. So we rather take the preachers who preach prosperity prosperity or every time you turn around you're going to get a house y'all going to get a car and y'all going to be rich spend three times and by next week you're going to have a million dollars oh he's a man of god oh my god he because he's telling you what you want to hear he's not telling you what you need to hear so when a man of god really loves you he's going to tell you the truth and love because he's getting it from the holy spirit and the holy spirit is speaking through him to his people because it's our job to lead you the right way. This message also applied to me. If it don't apply, then let it fly. But I know it applies to me. Tell someone, it applies to me too. It applies to me too. If, if I don't live right, I'm going to hell. I ain't trying to go no hell. Praise God. I want to go to heaven to be with Jesus. Amen, somebody? First of all, before we go any further, uh, I'm going to respond to our, our spiritual daughter, Shamir. You are precious soul. God loves you. And we want to thank all those, first of all, wow, it's amazing, people who gave to the Cash App and the GoFundMe, Sharon Haskin, God bless you, someone say Sharon Haskin, 
Praise God. Thank you for that awesome blessing that you have gave. God is going to bless you tremendously. Such a faithful yes. giver. Amen. Praise God. Kelly Delizer gave an awesome blessing. Someone say Kelly Delizer. Kelly Delizer Jr. Pray, thanks for reminding me. Praise God. I'm a junior. I'm Warren Jr. And my father was singer. You know, he, praise God. He died when I was three years old. Praise God. But I'm Warren Jr. So we juniors. Juniors is in the house. Tell us when juniors is in the house. Thank you for that awesome blessing you have gave. May God continue to bless you and those who gave to a gold for me, dying shepherd. My God gave a tremendous blessing. Yes. My God gave out your heart. She's always supportive. I mean, her and Brother Shepherd are so supportive, along with Sarah Coverton and Anthony Coverton and oh, Alona Frazier. Wow, wow. We, 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 she gave us such a tremendous blessing to the GoFundMe and to the Cash App. My God, I'm, I'm amazed. I have no words. May God continue. Yeah. Hmm? I was just saying thank you. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. We wish you thank you. And God is going to continue to bless you. And He. It's not going to forget about your giving. Praise God. If you're giving to him. He's going to turn your decrease into increase. <laughs> Come on, tell us when God will turn your De decrease into increase. increase. And praise God. When you'll continue to obey God's holy word. Tell us when pray and obey. Pray and, obey. and live holy every day. And praise. Every day. Amen to somebody. Amen. Pray God. That applies for us too. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Okay, we're going to. Um, respond to some comments here. Um, this is the handmaiden. He said, Pastor Warren, this morning I was left in tears listening to you play on the piano. Well, that's great, for he is Lord. You know, we like to sing that song, for he is Lord. For he is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. And every knee shall bow. I don't have my piano now. But every tongue shall confess that Jesus, Jesus Christ, he is Lord. So I'm not playing my piano now, but we got our piano. Yeah. Praise God, but I played it now. But yes, we love that song, for He yeah. is Lord. So yes, I'm thank God that it blessed your soul. You know, we love the worship, for He is Lord. It was a video from eight months ago. It healed my soul. It's beautiful. And now to see you playing music this afternoon has blessed me. There's a part right here that really touched me. Mother's Day. Is coming up, you said, and I am not close to my mom. Uh, I'm with you on that. I have decided to skip church Sunday because I feel rejected. God let me know he loves me. Yes, he does. It's like all of you out there. He loves me and healed my hurt through your piano playing. Jesus gets the glory. Thank God for your YouTube ministry. We praise God. That's why we on YouTube. For God to work through us to bring healing to you. Just to see you heal and smile makes us smile. Praise God. I'm not talking about smile. You on candy cam. I mean, that back in the days, I used to like to watch that. <laughs> but Jesus has smiled on you. Amen. He loves you. He loves you. Amen. We love you too, but Jesus even loves you more. So we're glad to hear that. Those who Everybody's not close to their mother. Everyone doesn't have a loving mother. Uh, there's those who have mothers who are witches, who works against you. Then you had abusive mothers, abusive parents, abusive fathers, just to keep it real. Everyone doesn't have a loving, 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 loving mother. We wish you, you, we wish that was the case in every case, but in, not every case. But we know that Jesus still loves you. Amen. Praise God. Who His love is greater than what your mother can give you. His, his, his love is greater than what your mother can give you or what your father can give you or sister and brother can give you. He has an unconditional love. That's why I love that movie that uh, Mel Gibson made that God gave to Mel Gibson about the passion of Christ. Amen. Amen. His passion. You know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son um, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 verse 17 said... For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God doesn't want to see no one perish in hell. He wants to see you have eternal life. That's the purpose why he died on the cross. 
and to shed his blood for the lost to wash away our sins. That's not hard to understand. It's very easy to understand. Uh, I don't use big encyclopedia dictionary words. I speak very plainly like Jesus did. He spoke in parables. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Tell someone, thank God for the truth. Thank God for the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me, says the Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John chapter 14, verse 9. So Jesus do loves you when you have no mother. On Mother's Day to celebrate with Jesus. Amen. It could be your mother, father, sister, and brother. Praise God. He's embracing you with his love right now. I know it hurts. When you go to church on Mother's Day and you see them with their mothers and they're close, which is beautiful. It's not that you play hating them. It's that maybe in your life, and uh, not maybe, but it, it, in your life, you really have a you don't have a mother who loves you. They may have been doing witchcraft against you, doing evil against you, putting curses, trying to put curses on you, trying to speak word curses on you. But there ain't no weapon that is formed against you that shall prosper. They cannot curse who God has blessed. Mm -hmm. You know, who God has blessed, no man can curse. But it hurts when parents speak out word curses. You're supposed to speak life on your children. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Now, you're not supposed to molest the child. You're supposed to protect the child. So it made no sense to bring children in the world with a deadbeat dad who's wicked and evil and then got a thousand babies all around the world not paying child support. And, amen. And then you knew this man was... I'm talking in general now. Many of you knew this man was no good. You knew this woman was no good. And God then told you not to marry that man. He then told you not to marry that woman. But you were so in love with the sex. You were so in love with his muscles and his six pack. He may have a six pack, but then he got to use that same six pack and strength to take care of his six kids. Not just lift weights up in the gym. And God then said, don't marry her. She's a witch. We ain't trying to switch for being a witch. You don't want to repent, but you got so wrapped up in her looks. Amen. He said, oh, come on. You said, she's fine. I want her to be mine. Oh, then when the Lord said, don't marry her, you went and married her. And now you regret you married you married a nightmare. You married a man who's number the nightmare. You know, they started out like your dream girl and your dream man. And you, know, you had the big Cinderella wedding and then after the honeymoon, uh-oh, then the real side of them began to come out. You didn't know he was that wicked. You didn't know he was abusive. You didn't know she was that evil. You didn't know she was that spicy. Although we all have ways about us, but some of them just plain wicked. So you say, Lord, I made a mistake. Uh, amen. I want to minister to Sister Samir as well. We thank God for all of you out there. Sister Samir, he said, thank you. I asked God for scripture. He, was, he went to my video that I made. Praise God. It says some, some of my worship songs that will heal you. Amen. Uh, I made worship songs and I've written. And the, uh, now, the, uh, now the song here is Lord. I didn't write that. That been out. But the other song, We Worship You, that I wrote that song. is already copywritten. And to the young man that's saying where to find my albums at, we in the process of distributing uh, my records. And we're going to have it on Amazon. So I'll let you know. So stay tuned. Okay. Okay, he said, thank you. I asked God for the scripture that he gave Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. That's great, Shamir. I will keep hearing, just have faith. Just have faith. That's great. I'm hoping I get stronger. It's hard to be humble and not get angry. Oh, well, it's normal to get angry. You know, the Bible should be angry, but should not. But, you know, we're human. We all get angry. Even Jesus got angry. He overthrew the tables. He cast out the money chains out the temple. Um, but he did it for a righteous reason because it was corrupting the temple. And he said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. It shall be the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. So Jesus got angry, but the Bible said be angry, but sin not. We are all capable of sinning. This is why we must fast and pray. If you don't fast, you're not going to last. If you don't pray, you're not going to stay. When you fast, God will help you to last. When you pray, God will help you to stay. Right. And when you abide in, when Jesus said abide in my words, and let my words abide in you. Seeking ye shall find, knocking the door shall be open. So yes, we all get angry at times, but God is a keeper. If you sin, just say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. I repent. If you did somebody wrong, tell them I'm sorry. Praise God and ask forgiveness and make it right. And I believe God will make it right. You say, I will make the darkness light before you. What's wrong, I'll make it right. All your battles, I will fight. And the high places, God will bring them down. Okay, you say, I'm hoping to get stronger. It's hard to be humble. And not get angry. True. We all go through that because we're human. And so upset. Yeah, because we see the situation you're going through. I'm going through this 
uh, I married in flesh. She admitted it. That's good. At least you're honest about it. You ought to be holy. You got to be honest. That's what God loves about you, that you're least honest. So you married this man in flesh. We were just talking about that, too, a couple of seconds ago. Didn't listen to God, but I understand. I repent from disobedience, and I still love God. That's beautiful. And I know he's coming soon. I'm still here just brokenhearted. Oh, yeah, that's understandable. We're praying for you, Jameer. Jesus said, I come to heal your broken heart. Amen. I come to set the captive free. And all those out there who are brokenhearted. And then you left another comment here, a beautiful comment. She, she, had, she sucks a precious soul. Oh, yeah. Like all of you out there, you say hello, which means laugh sign. Oh my God, I'm still watching. Yeah, she's watching the video yeah. or the worship music. Mm -hmm. I was given that scripture. Yeah, Psalms 37. I'll quote that again. Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thy envious against the workers of iniquity, mm -hmm. but they soon shall be cut down as the green grass and wither as the earth. Ah. I like that. Like thyself from the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart when you can mix your way to God. You quote that scripture very well, Lady Priscilla. Thank you. That's one of our favorite scriptures. And she said here, praise God, she said, oh my God, I'm still watching. I was given that scripture a few days ago because I was ministering on that on the YouTube uh, ago. And then I began the song by Mary Mary, come so come too far from where I started from. Good. That's a good song. I came too far where I started from. Pray for Mary, Mary, y'all. Um, they need a lot of prayer. Too many women in the gospel world are dressing too seductive. So in breast, and some of them half naked, looking just like the world. You know, they can have a gift the same. But the Bible said that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance, according to Romans chapter 11, verse 29. So pray for Mary, Mary, um, that they get delivered from those seductive dress wearing. Even Yolanda Adams. She might be my cousin. My last name is Adams. I'm praying for her too. She has a wonderful voice, a wonderful gift, but too many women are dressing too seductive. God may have told them, okay, don't dress that way. You bring it on temptation. You have to represent me. You're my daughter. You're my child. I want you to dress holy. And some of them may not be listening to what he's saying because you want to be like the world. When the Bible declares in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, love not the world, and neither the things is in the world, or else the love of the Father is not in you. Don't love all the fake eyelashes and the long... Um, uh, all the long fake eyelashes and all that makeup, you know, makeup represents prostitution. Maybe you don't realize that. You, know, you study history, the geisha girls, uh, when they wore makeup, they started that stuff up in China. It was called geisha girls, the geisha, geisha girls. Everybody, all the men knew, everyone knew, men and women knew that when the women wore the, the paint on their face, that it represented prostitution. So that's what uh, uh, a lot of that paint they, rep uh, they wear represents prostitution. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are a prostitute because you wear makeup, but it's what it represents. And the Bible said to abstain from the very appearance of evil. God called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. He called us into holiness, even though we are saved by grace and through faith. But now he wants us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God, according to Romans chapter number 12, verse 1 and verse 2, we now belong to Jesus. You know, we're no longer like the world. We are the king of people. You're a holy generation. You're a royal priesthood. I'm just talking in general. So a lot of them carry demonic spirits on them, or seductive looks. So now when people listen to their music, even though the songs, the words are great and the words are very encouraging, but the ones who are singing the songs are giving off demonic spirits and maybe... They don't even know because the devil has tricked them and deceived them and want to take their soul to hell, even though they have a gift to sing and their songs are blessing multitudes of people around the world. But the devil's laughing at them because the devil knows that Jesus was saying to them in the last day, I never knew you, even though you did wonderful works in my name. You did records. You wrote beautiful songs, but you were still dressing half naked. Many of you were still living in this Sodomite lifestyle. You had a gay lover on the side, and you, many of you men have a wife and have a man lover on the side. And, and then now he done gave you AIDS, and now you giving your wife AIDS. And you and that man is going to hell for giving that woman AIDS. And God didn't told you come out that Sodomite lifestyle. I mean, there's a there's a whole lot of Sodomites, and homosexuals who are very gifted to sing, and they have choirs. I mean, even their songs are blessings to me. James Cleveland. Um, he was one of the biggest legends. What's that song? I came too far from where... I don't know if he wrote that song. Um, he, he Mary, wrote that? Mary 
re recorded that song. That oh, wow. James Cleveland song. Wow, so that's James yeah. Cleveland's song. Here we talk about Mary Mary didn't yeah. know that they re recorded yeah. James Cleveland's song, so he wrote that song. Yeah. That song is beautiful. Mm -hmm. That song blessed me. Yes, me too. And my yeah. father used to sing that song at yeah. church a lot. At church a lot, yeah. Uh -huh. His father was a bishop, the pastor, yeah. he sing that song a lot. And that's a beautiful song, but yet James Cleveland, this is scary, man. It's, you know, he was solemnizing his stepson. He, you know, he was one of the biggest homosexuals in gospel. You know, I, know. A lot of, I mean, there was a, there, there's a gay man who actually admitted that most gays are in the gospel world. He actually admitted. He said, they call it gay gospel. I don't want to call it gay gospel. It's the, the person is gay, but the gospel is not gay. Jesus is the way you're not gay. That's hate speech. No, it's not. This is truth speech. Jesus, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We know that no man comes to the Father but by me. So he is the way to heaven. He's the only way. He's the best way. So gay is not the way. Jesus is the way. So gospel is not gay, but the man who sang gospel is gay. So God loves the homosexual, but he hates the homosexuality. Same way God loves you lesbians, but he hates the lesbianism. Same way God loves me, but he hates when I do wrong. That's why we must repent from doing wrong, and God won't let us get no spiritual armor crawl. Right. Praise right. God. You know, right. we all have, even those of us who are straight, God loves us, but he hates when we do wrong. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Right. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Romans chapter 1, stop in verse 22 on down. It talks about that lifestyle is an abomination. So even there was a gay man who actually admitted that there are a lot of gays in the gospel world. He himself was gay. Mm -hmm. Now, so God is not pleased with that man because the Bible, it doesn't change. The word of God doesn't right. change. It is still an abomination. Amen. God is love. Yes, he's love. But he doesn't love sin. The Bible said the, that the effeminate would not inherit the kingdom of God. Um, so just go back to Mary. Mary, we want to pray for them. Yeah. And now, 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 we can't change them. You know, they have to want to change. A lot of them heard, not just only Mary Mary, there's a lot of women in the gospel world. I play bass guitar. You heard me play, so I used to play for choirs. I know about this stuff. There's a lot of lust in seducing spirits in the choirs, in the gospel world. I mean, some of them have dresses way up here, they have breasts all out, and they shout and say, I love Jesus. I mean, that same Holy Ghost that makes you shout is the same Holy Ghost that will teach you how to dress. He'll tell you, okay, that's too seductive. Take that off, daughter. I want you to dress holy. You're my daughter. I don't want you to dress like the world. I don't want you to be conformed to the world. There's a lot of men who are dressing seductive to attract the women. Yet he can preach. Man, be a playboy, sleeping with every woman he pray for. And she's weak because she's so mesmerized by the way he can preach and how handsome he look and the suits he wear. Uh, I ain't no playboy. I'm love my wife as Christ loved the church. But there's a lot of playboys in the church. And even though what he preaches is right, but what he lives is not right, and what he's doing is not right. So God may be pleased with his preaching. It does not mean that God is pleased with the way he's living. That's deep. It doesn't mean God is pleased with him, but he's pleased with the way he preached. Yeah. He said that about the scribes and Pharisees. Amen. In Matthew chapter number 23, he said they sit in Moses' seat, <laughs> uh, but they don't. <laughs> what he said. He said they sit in Moses. See, I want to go through this real quick, and I want to give you a word from the Lord. The Lord has gave me. This is deep. People think they get into heaven because they have a gift to sing and talent to sing. We get to heaven because we have the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you have the Holy Ghost, right. you operate the fruits of the Spirit, right. according to Galatians chapter five, verse twenty-two. Amen. When you have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. He gives you righteous character. Do we make mistakes? Yeah, we ask God forgiveness for our sins every day. But look what Jesus said. The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Matthew chapter 23. Look what he said, verse 3. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not eat after their works, for they say and do not. That's what they say is right. But what they do is wrong. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves would not move them with one of their fingers. In other words, they're hypocrite. Well, they're telling you how to live right, and yes, they can. A lot of them in the church world can sing gospel. Came too far for where I started from. People crying. Well, <laughs> oh, that song just touched me. But yet the same person is still living this solemn, gay lifestyle.
stood around solemnizing little boys, having repented. God then sent prophet after prophet to tell them to repent. They're going like this. Yeah. So God said, my people are destroyed because of what? Lack of knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Because they have rejected knowledge. And then God said, and so I will reject you for being priests unto me. Because you kept being child of molesters. And then I'll forget about your children. Oh, that sound mean, don't it? The reason why God said I'll forget about your children because he knew the children would come out just as wicked and just as disobedient as the parent. Remember, God knows the heart. He knows the future. We don't want God to forget about you and your children. That's why God wants us to repent and turn from our wicked ways. He don't want to just only bless us. He, may, he save us to serve him. Oh, that's deep right there. He save us to serve him and to stay with him. So, so be careful in that gospel music world. I play bass and I play music. There's a lot of Jezebel seductive spirits. So a lot of time when they sing, even though their songs is good, but they're giving off a demonic spirit and they may not even know they're doing it. A lot of them are involved into witchcraft. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them are just like the world. I mean, they're dressing like people from the club. And they're shaking their hips and they think God is being glorified and Jesus is sitting there like, this is not glorifying me. Right. I'm not pleased with this. This is not holy. Man may say it's right. I didn't say it's right. He said, these people honor me with their lips and draw nigh unto me with their mouths, but their hearts are far from me and do worship me in vain, teaching the doctrines and the commandments and the traditions of men. Read the book of Matthew chapter number 15. He quoted what the prophet Isaiah said. So what they say may be right, but what they do is not right because God isn't like all that seductiveness, all that lust. So now demon spirits, portals, the portals for demons are being opened. So now while you listen to their music, you're under more attack. Right. It's like certain preachers. They could be a good preacher, but he's a uh, but if he's a Mason, a Freemason worshiping Tumus, T-A-M-M-U-Z, he's a Freemason worshiping Balfamet, and he's of the devil. Even though he can preach and everybody jumping and shouting, it doesn't necessarily mean it's always the anointing. Right. Don't always confuse the emotion. Don't always conf don't confuse the anointing with the emotion. Don't get me wrong. God inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. The anointing has emotionalized me many times. When you feel the Holy Ghost, you're going to be quickening. Your, your hand will shake. You may run around the church. You may fall on the floor because God slaves you under the power of God. You may cry. Well, that's the anointing because he's breaking yokes. He's destroying yokes. And there's other times there are preachers who are just preaching what you want to hear. So everybody going to shout, y'all going to get a house, y'all going to get a car, say amen, I spend three times, run around the church ten times, and by tomorrow, y'all going to get a thousand dollars. Oh, hallelujah. But time a man of God come along and say, repent, church is quiet, then. Faces frowning, the, face, the lip drop. People are trying to get mad because a lot of them are not ready to give up shacking. Uh-oh, preach Holy Ghost. A lot of them are not ready to give up that old boyfriend who don't want to be saved or that old girlfriend wow. who don't want to be saved. They want to hold on to Jesus and hold on to sin at the same time. When Jesus said, why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? You can't serve two masters. Amen, somebody. A lot of people ain't ready to give up. The rich man wanted to follow Jesus, but he was not ready to give up all that he had to give to the poor to follow Jesus. And when we follow Jesus, it's the price. A lot of folks ain't going to tell you that. Tell someone the price is still right. The price is still yeah, I'm not talking about price is right on channel two. Mm -hmm. And praise God, Jesus loves you. He wants to bring you through. <laughs> but the price is still right. We're talking about paying the price for Jesus. When you love him, you don't mind paying the price. You don't mind decreasing so the Holy Ghost can increase. You don't mind giving up certain things for Jesus. And they offer me a contract in the world. They wanted to pay me $1,500 a night to play the bass guitar. That's a lot of money. Yes. And I need the money at the time, too. That's temptation. Praise God. That's years ago. And I gave it up. I didn't accept it to follow Jesus. You can't serve God and mammoth. The Lord can bless me himself. Praise the Lord. Without making pacts with the devil. So I'm not saying don't listen to their music, but be careful. Pray before you turn on these some of these gospel music and gospel uh, artists. When they sing, because a lot of them are, are into cults. A lot of them are, uh, have seductive spirits. And, they, and so you don't realize a lot of time that when you hear their music, there's demonic spirits that's coming through the record. And then it comes into your house and calls a vision. You're under attack. It summons monitoring spirits, witchcraft spirits, because a lot of these gospel artists is, is, is sad. Even in the gospel music world, a lot of them are into heavy witchcraft. A lot of them into Illuminati's with the Freemasons. I don't understand how you can sing about Jesus and be 
worshiping Baphomet at the same time. I mean, that's a, that's an ins, that's an insult to God. You're singing about Jesus, and yet you still with worshiping Baphomet. Baphomet is a demon. He looks like a ghost. So how are you worshiping Jesus and a demon at the same time? So that's an insult to God. I'm just talking in general to help you out there. Be careful, even when you listen to a lot of this gospel music. I'm just giving you warning. Ask God to cover you with the blood. The Lord may tell you, don't listen to that one. That one is a warlock. That's a male witch. So even, the, even though the songs are nice, right. but they give off spirits. Same way when the preacher preach. If he has a lusted spirit, he may preach good, but if he's a, if he's a playboy, guess what's going to happen? Lust spirits is going to be given off from him, from his body, from what's, his, what's in his mind. He may be master. He may have a masturbating spirit. He may have a lust spirit. Mm -hmm. He lusts not the young ladies in the church and cheating on his wife. So although he can preach the word, yeah. but if his heart is not clean, if yeah. he's not clean spiritually, yes, may, folk may jump in the shout and people may actually get saved because yeah. the word is already anointed by itself. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean he's anointed. Yeah. A man can not be anointed. And preach the anointed word and people will still get saved because you understand what I'm saying because the word uh, by itself is already anointed. Right. It doesn't mean he's anointed. The anointing does more than just make you preach good. The anointing also anoints you. God will anoint you to live holy and live right. what you preach. Preach to reach each. So if, if he has, so if he has a seducing spirit, if you're not covered by the blood, before you know it, you find yourself lusting. You find yourself having wet dreams. Don't even know why you're having all these lustful dreams. Right. Don't even know why you're having desires for the pastor. Uh, you having your flesh all of a sudden is acting up because of that seducing spirit from him then jumped off on you. That's why we have to be prayed up. That's why we have to be fasted up and prayed up because if he lay hands on you, uh-oh, come on, then spirits will be transferred from him on to you. Now you got all these demons following you because he has a lusted and seducing spirit. And he's watching pornography. He's not even trying to ask God for deliverance. He's not trying to repent. He he has pleasure in what he do. And that's the kind of man God said he's worthy of death, which means he's worthy of hell. According to Romans chapter 1, verse 32, he ain't trying to repent. That's why God said through his prophet Jeremiah, Woe be to the pastors yeah. who scatter my flock, who destroy my sheep. God was angry at the pastors. We're not saying all pastors are like that. They are real pastors. Pray for the pastors. Amen. So if, if it don't apply, let it fly. Okay. Amen. So I want to give you some something that the Lord had gave me this morning. Praise God. I told my wife about this. And every word that God gives ain't always a goody goody word, y'all. Yeah. Praise God. I, so if I'm going to give you a word that's uh, always goody goody. That means I'm not a real preacher. The truth doesn't always feel good, but ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Okay. I don't like spinach. <laughs> I only ate spinach because of Popeye, the cellar man. Popeye, the cellar man. We used to say, he lived in the garbage can, but he didn't really live in the garbage can. <laughs> olive oil was, I don't know what they saw in olive oil. What they saw in olive oil? She was skinny like a stick. Not trying to put down skinny people. I'm saying she was skinny in the cartoon like right. a stick. So skinny that she take a shower, even the water probably would miss her. That's how skinny she was. Drop. She, she so she was so yeah. remind me of um Plastic Man, and they would fight over Bruto and Popeye yeah. would fight over Olive Oil. Yes, they they stretching her. Right. They couldn't find another woman. Well, yeah. I guess Popeye loved it for herself in spite of how skinny she was. Amen. <laughs> probably what it, what it is, right? We just joking around a little bit. <laughs> I only ate pot, I only ate spinach because I thought my muscles would grow in two minutes because when I saw Popeye eat spinach, his muscles grew. He got stretched. So we were little kids. I thought that would happen to me. Well, it didn't happen. <laughs> but spinach tastes nasty, but it's good for me. You look like the foods that taste nasty is good for you. And then the foods that don't taste nasty are not good for us. Are not good for us. You get sugar diabetes or get high blood pressure or you. Right. Cholesterol will affect yes. your body. My wife can teach you on stuff like that. <laughs> she said, we got to eat healthy, Warren. We got to eat healthy. And thank you for helping me yes. eat healthy. But praise God. Well, that's like the word of God. The word of God is like a Holy Ghost spinach. The truth doesn't always feel good, but I thank God for the truth. Someone said, thank God for the, truth. God for the truth. Praise God, because it's going to lead me the right way if I've received the truth. A lot of people hear it, but don't receive it. This is what the Lord have gave you to help God's people. Uh, first of all, I want to help you, Shamir, and all those out there who may have the same problem. And cause we love you, and God has a great plan for your life. Um, check this out. There's a lot of friends I met in the past who the Lord have told them not to marry a certain woman or marry a certain man. There was a woman one time from a church 
Uh, I'm not going to mention the man's churches in Brooklyn. She said God told her not to marry this particular man. Mm -hmm. And the man ended up being a homosexual. Actually, it was it's for Bishop Hezekiah Walker's church. Mm -hmm. I love his music. Love his music. Lord, sing your spirit down. Mm -hmm. And there was a woman from a Salvation Deliverance Church on the Apostle William Brown. She was a great man. A great, he was a great man of God. She said the Lord told her not to marry this particular man from Hezekiah Walker's church. But she was so in love with the man and she married him. And God loves that man too, but it just was not in the will of God. Okay. She said Apostle William Brown even warned her not to marry. The late Apostle William Brown even told her, don't marry him. Mm -hmm. So God even told him to tell her that because yeah. I was her pastor. But she was disobedient, and she married the man, and she regretted it. Found that the man um, was in a gay lifestyle, too. Yeah. Okay. So she regretted it. You know, they had a child together, and um, she and, um, you know, she ended up taking care of the child. He still came to yeah. see his child because they still had the co-parent. They separated. Yeah. Uh, I want to let you know that a lot of times disobedience causes uh, act effects, bad act effects. It causes a lot of negative act effects. Even when you ask God forgiveness and say, Lord, forgive me, I, you know, I was wrong. He will forgive you. Uh, he will throw your, see, your, your sins in the sea of forgiveness, like the word of God says. He forgives. But even um, there's still penalties. You know, there's still penalties. It's punishment um, because of our disobedience. Look, for example, Adam and Eve, when they sinned against God, the penalty was they was put out of the Garden of Eden. Every baby that was born was born under the curse of sin. So uh, after Adam and Eve was put out the Garden of Eden, um, they live a righteous life after that. They did. I believe they did ask God forgiveness. I asked God would, have, would not have blessed them the way he did and gave them an offspring. But still, the after effects of the dis... You understand what I'm saying? Because of the disobedience, it still had an effect on all the generations. Even though they asked God forgiveness already. You follow me so far? So it, it affected us. Every baby who was born was born under the curse of sin. Under the law of Moses, they offered up lamb's blood for the washing away of their sins. But thank God Jesus made it easier. Oh, yes. He became that lamb. He took our place. He took your place to redeem us from our sins. He suffered as a convict. He knew no sin. He didn't deserve to go to the cross, but he did it for you and me. He could have destroyed the Roman Empire and those who crucified him but he didn't he was even dying for them that's why he said for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not what but have everlasting life praise God he laid down his life and then he took it back up again yeah. he shed his blood for you and me to wash away our sins if, we, if we're willing to repent from our sins repent means to turn away from the sin turn away with godly sorrow he can wash away our sins with his precious blood so he can, he can give us eternal life Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMessiah. Become a believer in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins, and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you don't have to take no drug overdose. It's the promise that God has for you and your children. So we thank God that Jesus came as Adam the second. Right. He cleaned up where Adam messed up. Amen. To redeem us from our sins when he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary and he arose from the dead the third day morning. Praise God. So there's still active effects of disobedience. Bad things happen when we're disobedient, which have nothing to do with God. It's not God's fault. God already gave his word. I want to let you know that God works according to order. Look what the Bible said. God does things in decency and in order. order. He's also a God of order. Certain prayers that we pray, God may not always respond to our prayers, and other times he do respond. Because understand, God is a God of order. He works according to order. For example, let's say if uh, I have $1,000 and I'm spending on a lot of junk. I'm spending a whole lot of junk. And I have done all the money is gone. Now I'm asking God, Lord, give me a financial miracle. I need a financial miracle. Right. And let's say I have $1,000. I don't pay the rent. I don't pay the bills. Oh, and I ain't got no money. And Lord, I want you to give me a financial blessing. God does not respond. Right. But he can. A lot of times he won't. You know why, right? Because God see that. I'm not saying I did that. I'm using it as an example. Right. God can see that you're not managing your money right. Mm -hmm. God wants order. First of all, you're going to say, first of all, pay that rent. Pay that bill. Okay, you spend that money to help take care of your wife and children. But if you spend a whole lot of junk, ain't nothing wrong with buying certain other things as long as it's decent, but then take care of your business first. 
So now if I ask God, Lord, I need a financial miracle. I want a blessing right now. God may not respond. If I say, well, Lord, where are you at? Why are you not responding? Because God is seeing that I'm not managing the money in what? Order. You understand that 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 makes sense. Now, if you want a financial miracle, Lam don't pay their rent on time or their bills on time. You can have the money. Lam can have the money to pay the rent, but they won't do it. They're spending on a thousand dresses, oh my goodness. twenty suits, thirty shoes. Oh Someone got a shoe fetish. There's nothing wrong with. There's nothing wrong with that. But then, if you're gonna buy all those things, first take care of your what business. business. That makes sense, right? Oh, yeah. That's order. Responsibility. Responsibility. Uh -huh. Take care of your responsibility. As long as you take care of your responsibility, then you can do other things with right. that money when you're spending on something decent. Right. Then you can buy certain things. But take care of your what? Responsibilities. Yeah. It makes no sense to, you know, you know, ask God for financial miracles and your children is going hungry and you're not buying money to help, buying food to help take care of your children, to, to talking to the men as well. So now when he asks God, I need a financial miracle, God may not always respond. Why? Because it's no order. God not going to always just, he's not going to say, okay, let me give him $1,000 right now after you don't spend all that $1,000. Yeah. But you never use part of that money to take care of your responsibilities. Because God is a God of what? Order. order. You understand? So this, I just want to use that as an example. Yeah. There was another man of God. He made the same mistake. He said God told him not to marry a particular woman. He was a man of God too, can preach. But he was so in love with this woman. You know, he was, you know, he got in flesh. You know, that can happen to all of us. We all make mistakes. Amen. So we pray for the people. We you know, listen. We all can fall. But he married her out of lust. He had sex you know, and everything, and come to find out, she happened to be a witch. Oh, goodness. And then she ended up. Having an affair with his cousin. She went both ways. A bisexual. So now he kept asking me, can you pray for me? Man, I'm praying. I was about 18 years old. He was like in his 30s. Great man of God. This man was anointed. But he was walking in disobedience. And it looked like every time I would pray for him, my prayers wouldn't get through. I can pray for others. And God will answer. And even when he prayed for people, miracles would happen. Even somebody got healed from cancer in his revival. The cancer came out like it happened to one of your members in the church. Yes. Your father was anointed. He had the deliverance ministry. But yet, every time he prayed by his own marriage, can you fix my marriage, Lord? Can you fix my marriage? Can you bless my marriage? At the time I was 18 years old, I looked up to him. He was my mentor. And I would pray for this man, hear his marriage of problems, hear him and his wife arguing over the phone. And I felt sorry for him because he had a very good heart. He said he married her because he saw her son. He saw himself in him, in her son. He didn't have a father growing up. He never right. knew who his father was, right. and he didn't have a father growing up. So he had the right motive, but the point is, he should never marry him. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God said, don't marry him. Mm -hmm. Even though he had the right intentions, because he saw himself in this boy, he wanted to be his father. Yeah. As a father that he never had. So his heart was still right, and God still used him. God still blessed him, but God did not ever fix that marriage because... It was not in. It was never in God's will. You understand? It was in order. He was walking in disobedience, even though he was still anointed. He asked God forgiveness, and God did forgive him. But he was still with him, trying to make it work. Trying to make it work. And like he would ask me, I'll pray, I'll fast. Yeah, every day. Every day, I'm like, Lord, fix my friend's marriage. Prayer wasn't getting through. Mm -hmm. We can't make God do something. God moves when He wants to move. Amen, somebody. God moves according to his will. Remember, he's a God of righteousness and in order. When God said to Adam and Eve, do not touch that tree. Do not eat of the tree of knowledge and of good and of evil. God expected for his command to be obeyed. Yes. And when they disobeyed the command, we know what happened. They was put out of the Garden of Eden. Now, they asked God for I believe they, they asked God for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. God still blessed them after they was, after they was put out of the Garden of Eden. But because of disobedient, it took it was negative, bad after effects. You understand what I'm trying to say? So bad things was happening in his marriage. Nothing was going right. Why? Because God was not in it. He was walking in disobedience. So um, he started having problems with his children. A lot of the, her bad spirit fell on the child. And so the child came against him. The other child was okay. So he was having all these problems because of what? Disobedience. 
You see, so he asked, so he did ask God for forgiveness, and he got out of it. Thank God, he's doing good now. It took a long time because a lot of time when you in love with somebody, it's hard to fall out of out of love. You know, you know, it's it's, it's hard to fall out of love when you've been with that person for a long time. But when you're married to Jesus, He comes first. God said, "I'm a jealous God. Thou shalt not have no other God before me." Can you imagine how God feel when He said, "You're married to Jesus spiritually." Now, I love that we have for Jesus is a different kind of love I have for my wife. My her, her love that she had for Jesus is a different kind of love that she had for me. Right. It's called the Eros love. Yes. The love that God has for us is called the agape love. He's our heavenly father. We don't make love with God. You don't make love with him. That's a different kind of love than you have for your wife or husband. Right. Right? It's a different kind way way different. You know, I else God would never have gay Adam and Eve. Adam loved God. But that was a different kind of love that, that, that he had that he had for Eve than he had for God. The love he had for God and the love God had for Adam was called the agape love, which is that unconditional heavenly fatherly love. He's our God. He's our creator. He's our creator. He says it's not good for man to be alone. So even though Adam loved God, but Adam was still alone. So he gave Adam a wife and not a knife. Husband love your wife as Christ loved the church. So this is what I wanted to say here. Check this out. This is what God have gave me. Mm. Check this out. So when this is what the Lord gave me to, I wrote this down. Thank God for Jesus Christ. So you understand how disobedience can cause bad after effects. Oh yes, definitely. Yes. Okay, I want to talk about this. Some people go through in the will of God. But if you're out of the will of God, yeah. he turns his, you know, because he warns you right. about it. But if you're in the will of God, he still has mercy on the situation. Right. Like he will still bless the situation, even though you're going through. Mm -hmm. it, a, couple will, a couple can be going through in the will of God, but he still has mercy and still blesses because that that's still his will. But if you're out of the will, he said no, mm -hmm. then he sometimes won't, the prayers won't go through. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yes. That's, that, that's exactly yeah. right mm -hmm. because you're out of the will. Yeah. That's what, tell someone, let's stay in the will. Let's stay in the will. Stay in his will. And how we stay in his will? By obeying his words. Oh, see, I all come together. That's not hard to understand, right? Mm -hmm. We all was guilty of that at times. Oh, yes. You know, I, I went through that. I, but I had to learn. I I, 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 I I had to learn. It didn't make it right. So I had to learn from my mistakes. Yes, so I won't make the same mistake to, over again. Yes, right. Now, this way, I'm, I'm glad you said that. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you, cause you broke it down on the level that people can understand. Uh -huh. So that was well said. And that's for all of us out there. Ain't that right? Yes. Look what the Lord gave me. He said, those who God told you not to marry that man or woman, even when you ask God forgiveness, Yes, he forgives. It's something like what you were saying. Yeah. But there is still a penalty yeah, okay. for disobedience. When you marry a soulmate from hell, <laughs> <laughs> right. who God told you not to marry, yeah. you came into covenant, is what God gave me with them, and separated yourself from God, who you were married to spiritually, and the heart of God, It's broken because you not knowingly chose the devil above him. God got emotions too. Even when you marry someone reprobate who do not want to repent from the sodomite lifestyle, going both ways. God already saw that. That's why see, he didn't, that's why he warned you. See, see, he didn't want you to get hurt. And you knew they were that way. There would be a penalty, a penalty for disobedience. For example, Adam and Eve, I just mentioned this before, uh, David, God brought evil in his house. Although he repented and asked God forgiveness, there was still a penalty, which was punishment. He had to pay for taking another man's wife and taking Uriah out. He took Uriah out, who was one of his best friends, just to have his wife. To have his wife. So yes, God throws our sins in the sea of forgiveness. But your disobedience causes bad act effects. You get a chance to read the book of Hosea 4, 6. See? So even though David asked God forgiveness, 
Yeah, after God sent the prophet Nathan to David and said, you were the man who did wrong. And, you know, I, I believe his first child died. That was God's punishment. Right. But later on, God gave him Solomon. Mm -hmm. Solomon was the one who built the, Solomon's temple. He was the son of David. But there was some punishment to David, even after he asked God forgiveness. But because his his uh, what he did was wrong, it, ha it, it, it caused bad after effects. Yeah. The Bible said God brought evil into his house. Now, when it says God brought evil into his house, what it means punishment. You're not talking about evil the way we know it. Yes. As far as, you know, corruption or the way the devil is. Not that kind of evil. What that kind of evil meant is punishment. You know, when the Bible said in Isaiah chapter 45 that God created good and evil, yes. it don't mean that he created the evil, the, the devilish, demonic evil. Not that evil. What it means, he meant punishment. He meant punishment to the wicked. Like he sent the flood back in the days of Noah. Um, like he destroyed the Psalm and Gomorrah. There was punishment against the wicked. Um, you read the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter number 30. It said that God turned Ethiopia into cruel leaders. He turned them over to slavery because they was disobedient. They kept worshiping statues and idols. So he sent evil to them. So that's what it meant by he created evil. That he, that he created disaster against evildoers. He sends punishment against wicked people, against the children of disobedience. The Bible said God is angry at the wicked every day. I mean, why? He's a wonderful God. He's a loving God. He doesn't like all his evil. We can't expect for a loving, wonderful God to love evil. So we thank God for God like that. So you understand, there's, there's, there's still penalties. There's, there's still for this, even after we ask God forgiveness. So when you say, where's God? Where is God? We asked that many times, like he wasn't hearing. David went through it. God allowed his own children to turn against him because of what he did to Uriah. He had this man killed somewhere in the war, set him up so he can have this man's wife, Bathsheba. God didn't like that. So even though David asked God forgiveness, we're not talking about y'all there. We're talking about the situation concerning David. Yes. Even though he asked God forgiveness, he repented, but it was still a what? A penalty. A penalty. See, yes. you understand. Okay, so when you say, where's God? God never left you. He never left your, he never left you, but his disobedience caused negative after effects, which do not come from God. God is perfect. He does not move when you and I want him to move. He moves according to his own perfect timing Amen. and his will. So when you say the courts, his citing is citing the baby's father to have custody of the children. We're praying for you. That's, that really had nothing to do with your husband cheating on you with a man, even though he know, even though we know it's wrong what he did. Yes. But that's a whole different situation, okay, than what the courts decide who will have the children. I'm going to explain that. I feel in your emotions, I feel in your hurt, but I want to give you the truth in love because God loves you. Praise God. Of your feelings and emotions will be bewildered of course. You're going to be hurt when he received the custody of the children and not you. Understandably, because that's your kids. But the question is, are you in right standing to have custody of the kids? Are you capable right now of raising them? You love them and they love you. Watch this. Now, we want to just leave, leave, leave the devil out just for now. I wish we could leave him out all the time, but we can't. Help it because the devil fights. Yes, doesn't mean God not gonna bless. It doesn't mean not gonna, God not gonna bless. It don't mean God is not gonna answer. But I want to let you see that God works according to order. He's a God of order. Watch this. If your husband, um, let's say you in the battle in court. If your husband is more stable, let's say if your husband is more stable, with a home or a place to stay, the courts will give the children to him. Now this has nothing to do with him cheating on you. That's a whole different situation. Even though we know he's wrong. But according to the courts, if your husband is more stable with a home or a place to stay, the courts will give the chosen to him. We're not saying that's a situation. I don't know your whole situation. We're just talking now in general in truth. Because many of you may be going through the same thing. Many of you saints of God is going through the same thing. So we just want to give you some wise counseling right now to help you. Okay? In love. We love you. And God loves you more. Watch this. If your husband is more stable with a home or a place to stay, the courts would give the children to him. Usually the courts would give the children to the mother, but she will have to, have to prove. You have to prove that 
she has she will have to prove that she has a stable place to stay and that her children will be safe and taken care of properly you understand if the husband talks to the courts to this out about the mother being unfit then the courts will award the children to the father whoever has the more stable job a living environment, the courts would give the children to him. Okay, now, we're just saying this. This way, now I'm talking in the natural world now. Just leave the devil out this time. I'm talking about according to the courts. Sometimes um, they, the father may bring up your past, especially if you, as those of you out there who might have been prostitutes, and, 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 and you could be really trying to repent and be saved. I'm just talking in, in reality now. When, when, when the courts hear that, and say, oh, you know, they can, the father can use that in the course and say, oh, she's not capable of taking care of the kids because she this and she's that. And God didn't forgive you already. He didn't forgive you. You didn't repent it. You're God's child. I'm just talking in general now. But according to the court system, they'll look at that and they'll check your background to see if you're stable enough to raise the children. So I don't know that's the situation that's going on in that case. But I'm just saying in the court system, they have order. It's an order. You got to see, are you able to take care of these children? Are you able to raise the children? Uh, he, uh, is he's more stable? Which has nothing to do with him cheating, which is still wrong. Okay, but a man can do those things and still be able to raise children. Yeah. To, able to still take care of children. He could be stable, you know, with a job. He may have it financially that way. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you can still see your children and y'all can both co-parent. I just want to give you the truth in certain areas just to help you. I'm not saying this is the situation, but I'm just saying this is what goes on in the world in the courts, in the court system. Even they have order. So if you know if man has order, God has order. So a lot of times, um, because God works according to order, God may not always just respond to your prayers right away. Praise God. He want to make sure that you are stable. He want to make sure you're stable financially. He want to make sure you're stable financially and spiritually when you continue to seek ye first the kingdom of God and, and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. We're not saying that God is not going to move, but God will move according to his time. So just to ask you a question, where is God? He never left you. He loves you. But because God works according to order, because of the disobedience which he already forgave you for, we all have suffered that at one time, it causes these kind of problems. And yet you can still be a child of God. You understand what I'm talking about, right? You can still be a child of God. You can want to get yourself right with God. God is blessing you. But in the natural world, it's still going to be negative act effects. Not that God cannot take with the devil. I can't always blame the devil. Sometimes it's just ourselves. Sometimes our own disobedience. It's just us. I mean, I can talk about myself. There's times I was disobedient. One, one time to my wife this. One time, and I'm almost done. Hope you enjoying this teaching. All this is for everybody out there. One time, the Lord told me. I told you this source the situation. I was in Harlem where I was born at. I thought I finished preaching, and it was hot. It was summertime. I like to walk on the bridge a lot. It's back in New York City before I moved here to New Jersey to marry my wife, Lady Priscilla. We both came from New York City. She came from Brooklyn. I came from Harlem in the Bronx. Anyway, uh, the Lord told me. He said, "Go." left. He said, don't walk straight this time. Usually I walk straight to go to the bridge, to walk on the bridge. It's summertime. It's hot. Praise God. And But the Lord told me, he told me, he told me this. He said, do not go that way. He said, go left. That's all he said. He didn't tell me why. He just said, don't go that way. Right. Go left. Go that way. Go to the other bridge to get to your house. Okay, I used to walk on the bridge a lot. I used to, you know, run. I used to, I'm very athletic and walk. So it was summertime. I'd eat my ice cream. And, and Holy Ghost said, do not go that way. Go this way. Did I listen? <laughs> I went my way and not God's way. Doesn't mean I wasn't saved. Doesn't mean that I'm, that I'm not anointed. But at that particular time, I was yeah. dis or what? Obedient. I should have listened to God. <laughs> I went to the the way the Lord told me not to go. Out came a rock willow. My goodness. This big giant rock willow bit my leg, oh my bit this leg, oh. and the owner was there and couldn't hardly stop the rock willow. The rock willow bit my leg, and thank God that rock willow did not damage my leg. God still had mercy, though. Oh my God. That was a lesson. I had to get rabies shots that day. Mm. 
The owner said, sorry that my rock weather yeah. did that to you. And thank God it was it was no damage to my leg because it could have been worse. Mm -hmm. But whose fault was that? The devil or God? Our minds, rather. It was not the devil's fault. It was not definitely not God's fault. It's our choices when the Lord tell us what Yeah, I made the wrong choice. I was just disobedient. Yeah, I, I, I was disobedient. We've been through that. I was disobedient. I made the wrong choice. I decided to disobey God. If I would obey God, that rock willow would have never had bit me. That, that would never have happened. If, if I would just listen to what God said and went the other way, that wouldn't have happened. So that was my fault. It wasn't the devil's fault. It wasn't death. It wasn't God's fault. So if I say, Lord, where was you? <laughs> he was already there. He already said. Don't go that way. See, he loves us. Warning come before destruction. Warning come before fall. I'm using myself as an example. So I went, went, went how to get rabies. Uh, well, I don't know if I have rabies or not, but I went and got a shot anyway. I don't have no rabies, but tetanus. technical shot, yeah. Okay, tetanus. That's what it's called, technical shot? Tetanus. Tetanus? Uh -huh. Thank you for correcting me. Uh -huh. Tetanus shot. Yeah. So I won't, you know, get any rabies. Yes, or anything. Okay. So I went that night to the hospital up in the Bronx. I, I was there all morning. And, and I never forgot, I, I, was, I was in my early 20s, my middle 20s at the time. So, yeah, um, if I would obey God, that would never have happened. That's the same thing with a lot of us. A lot of us, God tells us, don't go that way. And we go our own way. So when we go our own way, what happens? Bad things happen. See, the act, see the disobedience causes bad after effects. I ask God forgiveness. <laughs> I still had to get a shot. <laughs> I mean, I ask God forgiveness, but I still had pain. The pain, mm -hmm. it took a while for the pain to go away. He didn't take the pain right away. Away, right away. I asked him, he take away this pain? He didn't take it away. Because God like, well, you should have listened to me. You disobeyed me. I was trying to help you. He didn't tell me why not to go that way. I don't have to ask God questions. Just do what he say. If he say don't go that way, don't go that way. You don't have to, God don't have to go into all these details. He doesn't have to give us details unless he want to. Just do what I say. He done told Lot <laughs> and his wife. Yeah. God sent the angels to get Lot, uh, who's, who's, who's Abraham's nephew, out of the city. Y'all you, know the story, right? Because right. God was angry at Sodom and Gomorrah. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire. So you know, Abraham prayed, and you know, um, God had the angels of the Lord lead Lot and his wife out of the city so they won't be destroyed with the city. And suffer the punishment of God. What the angel of the Lord told them. Flee into the mountains. Right. And don't what? Look don't look back. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now he didn't tell them what was going to happen. If they disobeyed. Mm -hmm. He said just don't do it. Right. God doesn't have to always tell us details. And why. He just disobeyed my word. Yeah. I'm trying to help you. See when God said don't do something. Remember God is righteous. He's perfect. He sees the future. He sees what will happen if yeah. we go that way. He doesn't always tell us. What it is, or he may. He may, he don't always tell us why. He said, just don't go that way. Yeah. You already know what happened. Lot's wife decided to be hard headed, yeah. hard headed. <laughs> and what did she do? She looked back at the city, and she turned to a pillar of what? Salt. Salt. Yeah. Obviously, her heart was still in the city, yes. even though her body was out. She ran. Mm -hmm. What happened to Lot? She said, "Honey, I love you, but I ain't going to hell with you." He took his. Um, children and they flee into the mountains. So that gives a lesson to learn. We all have been there. A lot of us have been there. I said, I'm not going to make that same mistake again. Now, if folk keep making the same mistake over and over, after a while, God may take his hands off. He said, My spirit would not strive in man always. He said, You know, he turned him over to a reprobated mind. This is deep, y'all. This is what the Lord gave me. I'm almost done. This is what the Lord gave me this morning. It wasn't a good word, praise God, for the church. He said, Um, it don't apply to everybody. But this is what the Lord gave me. I had this dream. Uh, now, the Lord was speaking to me last night when I was on my knees. I thought I finished watching the basketball game. And, and my wife was asleep. I was on my knees for a couple minutes. And the Lord told me this. He said, concerning the Masons, God told me he doesn't like them. God can love you, but don't like what you do. I just want to explain that. He said, concerning the Masons, the Freemasons, God told me he doesn't like them. They mock him and distort his name. By adding Jabalon. J-A-B-U-L-O-N. Jabalon is a Greek demonic god. They add his name with Jabalon's name. 
He said, and this, they distort his name by adding Jabalon's name with his. They mock him purposely. They know they what they do is wicked. They're doing it deliberately. They mock him purposely. They know what they do is wicked. Those who repent it and has repented will be saved. Look what he said to me. This is deep, y'all. I seen, now this is what I saw in the dream this morning. This is like about three, four in the morning. I seen three witches, one dark skin, one not real dark. She was not real dark, but she was dark skin. Uh -huh. I saw three witches. One was dark skin, not real dark. Then I saw them in the spirit doing witchcraft and heard them calling names, doing evil. In Saturday morning prayer. Lord They're doing ritual. They was praying death on people. I heard them in the spirit. And I began to rebuke them in the name of Jesus. I've seen the one who act as Fred Sanford. On Fred Sanford and his son. What's his name again? Demond Wilson. Demond Wilson. In his dream, uh, he was giving out wise words of wisdom. He's a wise man. He's saved now, too preaching the gospel. He was giving out wise words. Now, go back to the witches before I go any further. They were doing all this witchcraft, and these witches went to church. They was going to church to get ready to celebrate Mother's Day. I saw this in the spirit. These were witches. I saw in the spirit. Now, I'm keep going. I've seen this in the dream. I've seen the one who acted as Fred Safford's son, DeMont, mm -hmm. yes. giving out words of wisdom, saying to guard yourself. I saw him. I don't know him personally, but he's a famous man, but I just saw him. I might meet him one day. I, we both came from Harlem. He was born in Harlem, too. I've seen the one who act as Fred Sanford's son, on Fred Sanford's son. You remember that? Giving out words of wisdom, saying to guard yourself and cover yourself. Don't be friendly with everybody. Let your words be yea and nay. I'm friendly, but he just let me know. Don't be friendly with everybody. Keep your guards up. Watch and pray. I saw confusion going on the trains, people traveling on to go out of state, people traveling to go out of state, and discrimination against Chinese and Asians. We know our, our black African Americans suffer a lot of that. That's going on. That's been going on for years. But I saw this against Chinese and Asians and other races, too. Didn't want them to sit down in some seats because they were Chinese and Asians. So I saw a lot of confusion on the trains when he was traveling that. I saw this in a dream. I've seen a group of witches coming out of church celebrating Mother's Day, <laughs> dressing seductive. A lot of that stuff going on in a lot of African churches, a lot of, Haiti, a lot of Haitian churches, even a lot of black African-American churches and a lot of white ch American churches too, different races. I just talked about those seductive dress styles earlier. A lot of them got seducing spirits. These are witches. I'm not saying all who dress seductive, they don't mean they're witches, but a lot of them carry seducing spirits. They ain't going to church. Have naked chest all out, back all out, legs all out, bring it on temptation. A lot of men doing the same thing, but a lot of women really doing it. It is. I've seen the, and the Bible should address in modesty, according to 1 Timothy chapter number 2, in modest apparel. A lot of them don't want to do it. There's penalties when you don't obey God's word. If you say you love Jesus, it should not be a problem with obeying Jesus. It is. I've seen a group of witches. Coming out of church, celebrating Mother's Day. I wrote this down. Dressing seductive. Mother and daughters. A whole lot of them. A group of them. Putting out seducing spirits. I was inside of a bakery in this dream. And I saw another woman who I knew. In green. With a, with a prophetess anointing. So God was using her to expose these witches. And the prophetess anointing. It's like God show you things. Inside, some were watching, some was watching what was happening. I picked up witches going to Pentecostal apostolic churches, doing witchcraft and praying death on people and trying to cause men to lust and turn women gay and didn't want them to be married to a man, but remain single from them and be married to a woman in the spirit. Even if they were not married in the natural world, which form into women occults, cults, 
C-U-L-T-S, are beautiful, seductive women in the church. So these are women who are witches that want to put spells on other women to become gay and like each other in the church. They came into covenant with each other. It's crazy. That's why you see a lot of women that get them women pastors. church. You see, there's all women. Yeah. A lot of the women pastors don't want the women to get married to a man, mm-hmm. even though they minister in the word of God. Did I say that earlier? Mm-hmm. And like me, ain't know how they got a husband. Then when they get a husband, the husband is a bisexual. Mm-hmm. The enemy doesn't want him to be straight. He might have got molested or raped and sexually abused. He needed healing. Mm-hmm. Not to be married to a witch who ain't trying to switch for being a witch and don't want to repent. Yeah. So there are a lot of them in church who don't want to see you women get married. She can call herself a prophetess. She can call herself a woman pastor. She's got the clergy on, the cross. and She may even can preach the word good too. It doesn't mean God is pleased with her. So I saw this, y'all. I picked up witches going to Pentecostal apostolic churches doing witchcraft. We know a lot of them in the apostolic church don't believe in women pastors. We know that. And praying death on people. Not that God don't use women, but he does. But not in that position. We know that's another subject that we can talk on in the future. I picked up witches going to Pentecostal apostolic churches, doing witchcraft and praying death on people and trying to cause them to lust and turn women gay and didn't want them to be married to a man, but remain single from them to be married to a woman in the spirit. Even if they were not married in the natural, which form into women cults of beautiful, seductive women in the church. It's a witch's cult. Yeah. A lot of them came into covenant with each other. That's why when somebody say, uh, uh, we are friends for life, be careful with that too. Make sure that they're real. Yeah. Make sure they appear. Make sure they're right. saved. Right. Because you're dealing with a woman who's a uh, male, mm-hmm. who's a male witch, a uh, woman witch. Uh, she could be you know, partly gay or bisexual, mm-hmm. even though she could have a man, but she likes women too. Uh-huh. Same thing with that man. They say, we're friends for life. They're trying to make spiritual covenants with you in the spirit. So every time a man come in your life, her spirit, the demon coming from her is trying to block your marriage. She's trying to cause a vision in your marriage because she said, you are my friend for life. And you didn't realize that she was a witch or he was a witch. He may be gay and may could be desiring you or she could be desiring you, even though they may have somebody. Let them go both ways. So you, but we gonna be now won't be happy right. for the friend right. to get somebody. They'll be working against that friend, mm-hmm. and they'll be married to right. somebody. A woman will be married to a male. Yeah. A male be have a wife, but they won't want their friend to ha- be happily married. There you go. Mm-hmm. They'll make a pact or a covenant to against that friend. Right. Yeah. That right. They'll just stay in covenant with them and not have a happy life. There you go. And, and then the one they married to, they fighting against that one, and they're well, jinxed. They, yes, they're and they jinxing them. their husband, or okay. jinxing their wife, and okay. making bad, they are omen to their yes, husband and wife, yes, and making bad things happen, but don't want to see you married. Yes, I don't want to see me true. married, I'll see you married. True. And so they, those are witches doing soul traveling, the acid projection, putting out spirits. Oh. And so if they put out a spell, it will only work on someone who's not saved, or if the person is saved, if they don't fast and pray, right. and they're weak-minded. Before you can know it, they coming against you. Don't even know why they coming against you. Mm-hmm. Uh, she coming against you. Don't even know why she coming against you. Uh, it causes cheating in the marriage. But see, when you're spiritual minded, that spell ain't gonna work. Mm-hmm. You spiritual minded. No matter how many other women or men come your direction, see, you still love your wife. You still love your husband because the love you have for God mm-hmm. and the love you have for your wife and husband will give you strength to resist temptation. Sometimes their spirit may send other men around or other women around so you can lust after them, hoping that you cheat. The mess, you know, that's deep, right? So it causes a vision. But it can't work. Because when we in covenant with Jesus and he join us together, it's not going to work because we're aware. That's why he said, watch and pray. What you said was deep. What you said was right. What you said was right, Lady Priscilla. Praise God. This is God. It's going to help somebody, y'all. So those who God told you, okay, I already said that already. This is deep. So I've seen a group of witches coming out of the church, celebrating Mother's Day, dressing seductive, mother and daughters. A whole lot of them are in the group putting seducing spirits out. I was inside of a bakery, and I saw a woman who I know. She's a prophetess. God was going to use her to prophesy against her, tell them to get right. She had an anointing inside some was she was watching what was happening 
I picked up witches going to a Pentecostal apostolic church doing witchcraft and praying death on people and trying to cause men to lust and turn women gay and didn't want them to be married to a man but remain single from them and to be married to a woman in the spirit even if they were not married in the natural which form into women cults of beautiful seductive women in the church. Those who God told you not to marry that man or woman, even when you ask God forgiveness, yes, he forgives, but there is still a penalty for disobedience. When you marry a soulmate from hell who God told you not to marry, you came into covenant with them and separated yourself from God, who you were married to spiritually, and offended him, you broke his heart. The heart of God, because you knowingly chose the devil above him. Uh, you may unknowingly, but you knowingly chose the devil above God. Even when you marry someone, reprobate, who do not want to repent from that sodomite lifestyle going both ways, and you knew they were that way, there would be a penalty for disobedience. But God also can erase the curse. You erased it. And he can take what's wrong and make it right when he's ready. Praise God. So we're praying for you and your children. Along your co-parent, you still see your child. And I'm glad that you asked God forgiveness. He already forgave you. He's blessing you. But this happened to a whole lot of us, but in different situations. I just wanted to clarify that to get a better understanding why God doesn't always respond when we pray. And there's times he do respond because God works according to order. He wants us to be in order with his word by obeying his word. Okay, but when we uh, don't obey his word, when he gives us a word, yes, it can cause setback. It can slow you down. It can cause, it, it can affect the children as well, too. And a lot of times, God can, I'm just talking in general now, God can see an evil spirit in that child. They may start off good, but as you grow older, they may get the same evil spirit the father got or the same evil spirit the mother got and become rebellious against you. Most of all, they can rebel against God. That's why God said in the book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6, at the end of the verse, I will forget about your children. I'm talking in general. That's a, that's a very personal thing. He sees the wickedness. He sees that they don't want to repent. They will never repent. He sees the future. See, the only way God can restore them is lest they repent and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm, I'm, I'm coming back home. Lord, I'm sorry for doing witchcraft. I'm, I'm sorry for being rebellious. I'm sorry, Lord, for cursing at your name. I'm, uh, Lord, Lord, I'm sorry for coming against my parents. I'm, Lord, Lord, I'm sorry. And, and I repent. And God will do a transformation in their life and can bless you and your family. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for your word that went forth today. We thank God for all those in YouTube land who's going through the same situation. We ask in God forgiveness for our sins right now, for the wrong that we have did. Thank you for loving us better than we love ourselves. Make sure that when Jesus forgives you, forgive yourself. A lot of you have a hard time forgiving yourself. The enemy, yes, want to bring up your past for what you used to be into. You might have been in witchcraft. You might have been in prostitution or drug dealing. And when the Lord deliver you and save you, yes, there's demons that want to try to draw you back. It's a spiritual warfare. But just stay in the word. Stay in the word. No matter what, stay anchored in the, I, my soul. Stay anchored in the Lord. My, like Douglas Miller wrote a song. The late Douglas Miller wrote that song. My soul has been anchored in the Lord. Keep staying in God. When you get discouraged, of course you're going to get upset at times. You're going to get angry. That's only normal. But keep staying firm in God's word. And say no matter what, even if I don't have my children, even right now, it's in God's hands. He can still work it out. I just want to stay God in your will. I want to stay, help, help me God to stay in your will. It don't, it don't hurt to cry to God. Jesus responds to tears. Like he responded to uh, the woman who washed his feet. Mary Magdalene, she used to be a prostitute and became one of Jesus' greatest followers. It was a financial blessing to Jesus. Now you didn't realize that. She became one of Jesus' greatest followers, became one of his closest followers, and she was possessed with seven demons, and she used to be a prostitute, and Jesus saved her. She fell at the, she fell at the feet of Jesus, and God began to bless Mary Magdalene like he can bless all of y'all. He said, your sins can be forgiven because he loves you. Only sin that God will not forgive is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Every other sin that God will forgive, he forgives you. He loves you with everlasting love. Make sure when God forgives you, forgive yourself. So, Lord, we repent. 
we're coming back to you, Jesus. We repent. And not just only to get blessed. Lord, we want to serve you because you deserve to be served. For you are our God. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the greatest of them all. Sanctify us holy. As we present our body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Thank you, Jesus. Help us. Continue to bless Shamir, handmaiden, all of them out there, dying shepherd, brother shepherd, uh, uh, handmaiden, all, all of them, brother prophet, brother Charles, uh, mean jockey, all you out there who have left great comments, even the names who I have not called out, Sarah Coverton, Anthony Coverton, all you have been such a blessing. And, oh, my God. And the ones, uh, uh, thank you, Kelly, Delizier, Sharon Haskin. Praise God, all of you out there who is watching, who's going through that family generational curse. The curse can be broken in the name of Jesus. It can be destroyed because of the anointing. We, 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 we commit ourselves. Forgive us, Lord, for being disobedient.